Well, you know what time it is? What time is it? It is 2.33 p.m. Oh, wow. But more specifically, it's time for another episode of American Brews and Tunes. Oh! Here's a theme song, you know it's not a mean song. It's a good song, just as it should song. American Brews and Tunes. Shibbity beep Shibbity beep a dow is right. That is right. Yes, you it said is. it in the theme song and you said it now. Yeah. You heard it here, you heard it first. Shibbity beep a dow. That's right. Anyways, uh, welcome again to American Brews and Tunes. Yes, welcome. This is one of our regular episodes, not those one offs that we've been doing of late. As of late, this is more proper and more regular. Correct. So, as you, all of you regular listeners remember from that last episode, which I last full episode, which I believe was David Bowie and Hostage Calm. Yes. You, you already know the albums that we've been listening to. But for those who are just joining us today for the first time, or maybe it's tonight, or maybe it's the morning, who knows? Yeah, whenever you're listening to this, perhaps at the first time. Uh, last time, Steve recommended for me the album From the Ashes by the band Pennywise. And Jesse recommended for me the album Marky Moon by the band Television. Yes. Not yes. the self-titled album from the 90s. Yes. I did make the mistake of was... forgetting the album, and I was listening to their self-titled album for about a week. It was and, really, uh, really funny whenever Steve, Steve told me that. Because I don't like their self-titled album. Because I had literally texted him, Marky Moon by Television. I was like, okay. And then he started so, listening to the television, self-titled album. By Television. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, They're like a complete 180 difference. Yeah. For those of you who are like, why are these random dudes recommending albums for each other to listen to? Well, that's just the format of the show. So, <laughs> welcome, the welcome to our format. Yeah, uh, welcome. Every other week we have a the regular episode where where Jesse listens to a usually a punk rock themed album that I recommend for him. And I listen to a usually more folk or alternative record or recommended indie, by Jesse. Or indie or, indie or alternative rock or... An album that I like. Yeah. So we recommend albums for each other to listen to. We come back and review them. Not only do we review those two albums, we review two brand new beers. Ooh! Now you may be thinking, wait, every other week? Well, then what the heck happens on that week where you don't have an episode? Yeah, why can't I listen to stuff from you guys then? What the, what the poo? (laughs) Well, (laughs) we just recently solved that problem for you by doing what we call one-off episodes. One-off episodes. One off. It's a one off episode. <laughs> All right, uh, John Williams. Yeah, but that's that's where we just take an album that we both really like and we review that by itself while trying only one beer. My name's John Williams and I like fifths. La 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 la. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about how a lot of in John Williams, a lot of John Williams scores, he uses the jump from tonic to fifth quite a bit. Hmm. Like that. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway, oh, goodness gracious. Anyway, back to what we were saying before, what Steve was saying before. Well, I got distracted by thinking about yeah, John Williams. But we have those one-off episodes every other week. But yes. now, since we're in the regular portion, the regular episode right now, we might as well talk about these these two albums that we'd be listening to. But wait, what's that? Hold, the ho- hold, hold, the horses. hold your horses. This isn't American tunes. This no. is American brews That'd and tunes. That'd be weird. American tunes. Yeah, that just seems like it's you can, only half of a you podcast. You can go to the radio for that. Yeah. So why don't we do the brews portion? Okay, why don't we do that first? All right. Uh, we had two new uh, brews this week. Yep. And they're actually both um, Pittsburgh beers. Uh, when I was back Ooh. for Christmas, I picked up a, a fun assortment of Pittsburgh beers that you can't really get down here. Down in here Nashville. in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. You can get certain Pennsylvania brews, such as Victory or... That's true. What's another good one? Mm, you can't, can't get Trogues down, down here either. No, you can't get that. You can get Victory. You can get Yingling. <laughs> true, you can get... Yingling's um, not bad. No, it's Yingling's, not, it's, Yingling's decent. As far as the cheap beers go, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, it's cheap and it's standard, at least standard in, here definitely and standard in Pennsylvania. Definitely standard in Pennsylvania. Hard do, to find west of the Mississippi, from my understanding. No, I've never, I've never seen it in Minnesota. Yeah, but if you go to a bar in in Pennsylvania and say I'll have a lager, they'll probably give you Yingling. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In the same way that if you're in Boston, you say I'll have a lager, they'll they give, give you the same, same items. items. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what do we have this week? I am drinking a beer from the brewery called Rusty Rail, which is from Milfenburg, PA, which is near Pittsburgh, I believe. Hmm. And the beer is called Rail Spike 
IPA. Mm. Wow. Here's a little description on this beer. Go for Known it. for their incredible strength, railroad spikes were hammered deep into the ground in order to hold tracks together and keep massive steam engines on course. Forged from the Centennial, Columbus, Simcoe, Chinook, and Cascade hops, our Rail Spike IPA delivers a sharp flavor as strong as dependable as the hardware it is named for. Oh, wow. Wow. I like how they keep the Rusty Rail uh, uh, brewery name kind of going in the name of this beer. Clever. I'd like to investigate some of their other beers to see. Maybe they have the uh, the locomotive uh, brown ale or the... Or Smoke, the, the smokestack or smokestack stout, smokestack stout or coal furnace, the coal furnace, coal furnace engine, uh, crispy <laughs> IPA, crispy or, <laughs> or the uh, the the train car pulling pilsner. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Oh, uh, anyways, or the craft caboose, maybe, maybe it brings you down back down to your bottom, or the caboose cream ale. Caboose Cream Ale. That's a good one. I'm trying to think of a, a beer that started with C. Yeah, one yeah. That's the only I can think of. What are you What are you drinking this week? Well, I'm also drinking a Pennsylvania beer, right? Voodoo? Pittsburgh beer. Well, it says doesn't say Pittsburgh on here. It says Meadville. Which is Pittsburgh. It's close enough. Close enough. Okay. That's like saying we where we live is kind of like Hermitage, but we say Nashville. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, technically we live in Nashville because yeah. Well, yeah. Address is in Nashville, but whatever. Yeah. That's just pish posh. Tiddly pack. You know, you know. Um, I do not know. That's a strange little phrase. <laughs> Those are just the words that came out of my mouth. Schmorgasborg. Um, anyway, this beer is from Voodoo Brewery, and it is called Gr- Gran Met. Is that a T? Yes, Met? Gran okay. Met. Gran Met. Uh, I'll read you the description of this beer. It is, in, uh, in parentheses, Grand Master is a flash to de- of delicate flavors. Oh, delicate. This holy grail of Belgian styles is one for the connoisseur of craft beer. Okay. At Voodoo, we use a special technique of adding beet sugar to the ale as it is fermenting to soften the ester? Ester? Is it east? It's not Easter. I don't know. Easter? I like Easter. Ester. E-S-T-E-R. Let's say ester. Ester flavor production which helps in the delicate nature of this ale. We hope you feel that we are doing our best to honor this wonderful heritage. So this is a Belgian-style ale. It's unfiltered, and uh, I don't know. It sounds kind of cool. Yeah. I've had a very that strange one before. Picture I remember it being but... sweet but good. Hmm, okay. Uh, I did a little bit of research. Meadville's uh, just north of Pittsburgh by maybe like an hour or so. Okay. So, uh, so not, not nearly as close as I thought. And this one's uh, close to Union uh, Township was about an hour from Pittsburgh, but still okay. close enough to be both, local Pittsburgh beers. Both Pittsburgh, but you'd consider that a Pittsburgh brew. Yes, I would. Well, I don't know. Let's just consider it for this podcast. Okay. If you don't like that, sorry, send us an email. <laughs> Please. Send us a message on, on the social medias. So what say you that we crack these uh, these beverages and pour them? Okay. Ooh. Mine did not give much in the way of a sound. Neither did mine. <laughs> well, that's okay. It was just like, that's okay. It was like this. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mine has a delicious color. You can't taste color, Steve. Well, I can. Uh, I can use delicious in whichever Who knows? way I want. Maybe you can. Mine kind of looks like Mountain Dew color. Yeah. If we're gonna go in the route of pop. Yeah, go in the route of pop. Um, I'm not really sure what color mine would be. Well, mine kind of looks like Mountain Dew mixed with just a little bit of cola. Mine looks... Enough to give it a brown... Yours looks like apple juice. A, yeah, that's a good... That's good, too. Mine looks like hazy apple juice. <laughs> it's not a good descriptor, but mine has a nice uh, foamy head on the top. Well, you guys all know what apple juice is. Yeah. So... Yeah, there you go. Well, maybe you don't. I don't know. What, what's, a, what's your smell like? Let me see. Oh, mine smells really sweet. Mine has a nice subtle hop smell. Mine has no hops. Not potent, just like, just barely like hops, but you can definitely smell it. It's there. It's very yeah. subtle. Uh, yours Ooh, smells yeah, fruity. Yours, does. yours smells fruity. And you, it smells like that Belgian yeast. So yeah. let's say we give the, the cheer and try these beers. You know what? Why don't we? Yes. Why don't? Let's say you. <laughs> <laughs> well, here it goes. Shiba be Mmm. Oh, that's 
You know what? The flavor um, follows the the smell, which which I think is a good thing. Um, for mm. for my uh, my whatever you call this oh. rail spike IPA, it's very subtle in the hop department. Is so it more of the uh, more of the the meaty hot pellet flavor, or is it more of the crisp like mm. citrus flavor? I would say it's a crisp hop flavor, but I wouldn't say it's citrusy. If that makes sense. Okay. It's not aggressive like an east like a West Coast IPA. But it's, it's also not citrusy not... like the New England style. It's okay. Probably before like West Coast style IPAs got real this big. Would be, this would could, probably this would be, be like a, a standard juicy. IPA. Okay. Um, what about yours? Man, mine is also smells like it. It tastes like it smells. Sweet. It's very sweet. And I can kind of see what they're saying with the beet sugars. Because yeah. there's the sweetness isn't like um isn't like the sweetness I'm trying to think of this. It's not the same type of sweetness that a like a cream ale has, or like a uh, just regular lager has. Yeah, I, where it's I'd not agree. like, I mean, sugary is not the word. Obviously, like, un, like an unbalanced sweetness. Yeah, like um, a very. For, for those of you who not, know much about beer, uh, malts give a natural sweetness to the beer. That's why they add hops to balance it out. Uh, on cheaper lagers, they don't really have much hops, so you get that use. that malty sweetness up front. Which isn't necessarily at all what you're talking about, but just to provide no, some context. No, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's less of that aggressive sweetness and more of a very mellow sweetness. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I would assume that comes from the beet sugars. It has to. They, because they the, use that for... the sweetness is really, I wouldn't say it's like earthy, but mm-hmm. it almost has an earthy texture to it, if that of, makes sense. A lot of Belgian rock sugar comes from beet sugars. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, how do you feel about it? I like it. If, uh... If they distributed this down here, I would probably get it maybe once a month. Fair enough. Maybe. It's a nice treat. Yeah. Um, they have a a version of that beer which, which was aged on um, um, some type of fruit. Like it's aged on fruits. I can't remember off the top of my head what. Um, but it's, I think, even better than this version, huh. which is quite nice. Actually, I'm going to amend my answer. Um, I would get this once a month in a sixer mixer. Oh, interesting. So I, interesting. I wouldn't want to have an entire six pack of it, but it is a nice, a nice kind of sweet, mellow treat. Um, this beer I would have again for sure. It's really easy drinking, um, almost in the way that a session IPA is. Hmm. That is they're it? they're really easy drinking. Like you can have multiple of them, but it tastes way better than a session IPA. Okay. And it clocks in at like seven point one percent. So instead of like four point five. Yeah. So you probably don't want to have a full six pack of this. You would have a. You'd be down for the count. Probably. Probably, but it's it Depending doesn't taste like it's seven point one percent and your beer this actually is, is pretty uh, high graph. Nine point two percent and yeah, so it does not taste like that. That extra two point one is a lot. Yeah, in, this, in does, beer. this does not taste yep. like a nine point two. But I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'm a happy camper right now. You wanna do a little uh switchy switcheroo ski? Yeah, you mean switch ski. Switch ski. Let's do a switch ski and see what we think ski. <laughs> yeah, this smells nice. And uh, the flavor, you're right, the flavor definitely follows through with this one. It is, like I remember, yeah. not as sweet as I remember, actually. I remember it being sweeter, but that's quite huh. nice. I definitely agree with you on yours. Mellow. Um, it's like, like a it's mellow and it's... crisp. Not I aggressive. Would, yeah, it's it's definitely crisp, but I would I would say it's more like that, it's more like that meaty hop than a citrus hop. Mm-hmm. And uh, for those of you who don't really get what I mean by meaty hop, um, if you were to take a hop, a pelletized hop pelletized hops yeah and smell it and then proceed, smell it ties the pelletized <laughs> and then proceed to chew it ties it <laughs> crunch it ties it that's that that smell of a pure like a raw hot pellet is kind of the taste that i get from that I mean a rop pellet a rop pellet yeah no that, that makes a lot of sense or a roplet 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 that sounds like a name of a pokemon droplet that roplet yo well, anyways, uh, go! Like always, if our, our taste buds uh, change, or if the flavor of this our beer changes as they warm change. up, as the flavor of these beers warm up to our taste buds, yeah. we will let you know, uh, because we're yes. going to continue to have them. Because through. as everybody knows, whenever a beer warms up, that is how it truly tastes. That's why when people talk about warm beer being gross, it's usually because they're having cheap beer. Yep. And it tastes better when Don't it's Don't have cold. that Bud Light warm. Oh. So you know the uh, the Coors Light, uh, cold as the Rockies. Cold as the Rockies. Yeah, when it's cold, brewed, filtered, and packaged. Really cold. It. You can't really taste it when it's cold. Yeah, 
You can't taste the actual flavors of the beer yeah. when it's cold. But anyway, enough about enough about that. Yeah. I don't Let's, know who uh, went first last time about the albums, but I'm going to go first this either. time. I think that I went first last time. So I'll go first this time. All right. Since you described this beer as like meaty, let's jump into the meaty album. Okay. Well, I mean, this uh, this is arguably arguably also meaty. Yes, but in a different way. Yeah. Um. So here we go. Television. Marquee Moon. Uh, like we said before, uh, I was listening to their debut album, or I'm sorry, their self-titled album on accident because I forgot which one Jesse recommended. Even though it was in a text, and, and you could so just look back and look at it. I was like, it. Jesse, I don't really like this album. And, you, and I was like, it sounds like they're trying to recreate the sounds of the 80s. I mean, that's really ahead of its time, I guess. And I was like, not really, because the album I thought he was talking about was from 1992, but he was actually talking about an album from 1977. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's the album that I am reviewing right now, Marky Moon, which was released Early 1977, the debut album from a television. Um, yep. Television was a New York, and I say very generally, punk band. Uh, yeah. With quotation marks a around lot punk. of A lot of people more um, would classify them as like... <clears throat> oh, they've been classified like pre, as a lot of things. Like pre-indie. Yeah, uh, they've been ex- classified as experimental punk, yeah. avant-garde punk. Yeah. The reason they were lumped in with this punk genre is because they played regularly... At CGBGs, which was a huge punk rock venue, um, their contemporaries uh, were were people such as um, Patti Smith, The Ramones, Blondie, all these like punk bands from the seventies yeah. in New York City. The, the bands that played really simple songs like Three Chords, yeah, uh, like Sheen is a punk rocker, you know. Sheen is a punk um, rocker, but and apparently their guitarist, one of their guitarists, um, I can't remember what his last name is. But apparently he he and the other guitarist, the guy they did the main songwriting. Mm-hmm. They uh, the one guy who who stayed in the band was like they were kind of clashing a little bit. And it was, uh, the other it was guy, a guy with the name of I can't remember his first name, but his last name was Hell. Yeah, he was Hell, a bass yeah. player. Um, he wanted to do more punk songs, and the lead singer did not. Yeah, uh, so they clashed and broke up. Yep. Yeah, but then he went on to and play with. He formed the band The Heartbreakers, mm-hmm. who played with uh, that lady. Who knows? Someone and The Heartbreakers, right? Yeah. I don't know. I only know, I only know Tom Petty and The Heartbreakers. Oh. But I, 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 do, I, I know you're right. So um, anyway. But anyways, uh, unlike all the punk bands that were playing at CBGBs and all the their contemporaries, uh, Television wrote and played really intricate songs that had really different arrangements and elements of jazz yep. and all kind of weird non-punk stuff in the music. Yep. That's a, a, a bad and non-punk stuff. I would say the the biggest thing that's not punk about this, or at least not, like, Pennywise... Is they is didn't play power chords. Like, z- almost zero chords are played in this album. Uh, they were extraordinarily technical, like, really technically proficient at their instruments. Yeah. They didn't do power chords. They had a lot of riffs. Uh, but this album was super influential, and I'd say it shaped... Punk, alternative music, and indie uh, going forward. I, yeah, I would say even like a lot of the indie music yeah. that I've listened to, like I could see how people would listen to this and be like, "Man, like that's yeah. awesome! Like I want to do something more like that with less chords and more flowing guitar melodies <clears throat> and whatnot." Yeah. Uh, the first thing that struck me when I listened to this album was the guitar lines. Yeah. And his vocal style. Yeah. Uh, it's a very unique vocal style. I might almost liken it to '80s pop music. Y- you have to listen to it for yourself to kind of gauge what you think about it, because that's a, a strange understand. way to describe it. Because '80s pop music could be I mean a bunch of things. That's just what I thought of when I heard it for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, but listen to it and see what you think. Um, as always, we're gonna I'm gonna go through the song listing. I'm only gonna recommend three songs. I do have one honorable mention. Uh, the songs I do not recommend. I will try to go over those. Very briefly. Very briefly, yep. Uh, the first song is called See No Evil. I do recommend it, and I gave it a rating of True TV, which is a TV channel. I knew you were going to... One of oh, my, favorite, I, one of my said, favorite TV channels. Jesse thought I was going to use a rating system of TV shows, shows and I told him no, because that was TV, TV channels. stations. Uh, True TV is great because they play Impractical Jokers and a whole bunch of other great shows. Impractical Jokers, what a funny show. It is. Pretty much every show on there is great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was holding that in. Um, but anyways, okay. See No Evil, the first song yeah. on the album. I liked it immediately. I think it's a great right. album opener. 
Um, it starts off with this guitar line, do 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 which I don't. It's hard for me to actually make that guitar noise, but it's just really cool sounding, and it kind of goes throughout the entire verse. It's a fast song, like super high energy, and it it really kind of sets the tone for the album. I think it gets you excited for the rest of the music. I see no. As far as like melodically speaking. I would say that guitar line, which starts out in the intro and, and proceeds throughout the verse, is more melodic and catching than his actual vocal melody. Yeah. I, I almost so don't too. pay attention to his vocals in the verse. Yeah. Uh, but once you get to the chorus, that's where I think it kind of switches and the guitar moves to a more arpeggiated, uh, like picking individual notes in a chord uh, type, type phrasing, and the vocal melody really kind of shines then. Yeah. So they kind of do like a switch between the verse and chorus, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lyrically, I think the song's about wanting to do things that are either impossible or morally wrong. Like, when I say impossible, like, he talks about jumping over a mountain or flying, which could be a metaphor for doing bad things. Right. Um, but ignoring the potential consequences, because he kept, keeps saying, I see no evil, when talking about these I things. I see no destructive bird. <laughs> uh, I also did read that he um, da, da, studied a lot of, like, French poetry and, like, really artsy well, yeah. avant-garde stuff to, to influence his writing. Yeah, apparently he... They were learned. They moved to New York to become a poet. Yeah, and actually the, the bass player who was yeah. in punk rock did the same thing, which is yeah. really odd. Yeah. Kind of cool, though. Um, the, there's an awesome guitar solo in the song. It, it shreds. Uh, that actually happens in most songs. <laughs> the guitar yeah. solos there's definitely belong in rock and roll, solo. not punk, so that's why it, it's hard to call this band a punk band, even though they were in that scene. Yeah. Um. Anyways, like I said, I, I recommend the song, and it's a great album start. I, I think anyone who listens to this would enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Um, the next song is called Venus. Uh, I gave it a rating of ESPN because unless you're like (laughs) trying to watch for something, maybe you're not going to like it. (laughs) ESPN. Yeah. I mean, me being a a general sports fan, I can usually find something I like on ESPN when it's on. But if it's like, they're going to talking about a team that I don't really like, or they're talking about a sport I don't really like, I'm not going to tune in. And so this song, it it can be good when I'm like at certain parts, but I, I, I can tune out. Yeah. Um, it slows down the pace big time compared to the first one, but it's still really catchy and it's super impressive guitar work. Um, lyrically, the only thing I'm going to say about it is there's one line in the chorus where he says, I fell right into the arms of Venus de Miro, which is a statue that has no arms. Really? Which is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, it's a, I, I guarantee you've all seen this statue. It's really iconic. Um, so he's, uh, like I said, he's well-learned. Making a little joke. Yeah. Making a little jokey joke. Um, there's a really cool guitar hook at the end of the chorus. I'll let you guys listen and figure that out for yourself. Um, on to the next song, which is called Friction. I also recommended this song. Oh, nice. And oh, I gave yeah. it a rating of AMC. AMC, okay. Yeah, nice. AMC is a great station because they play great movies generally. Uh, and their their TV their what do you call um, TV shows are really good like they had Breaking Bad, The Walking oh, Dead, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mad Men, all AMC stuff. So so uh, comic book men's on there too. Um, great programming whether it's TV shows or whether it's movies. So it's it's a good good all around. Um, I think this song is a really cool start. Uh, the lead guitar line almost makes it sound and feel like a psychedelic song, mm-hmm. uh, which is really different compared to the first two songs. And it like it's definitely not punk. Like, I know they're they're lumped with all these punk bands, but when you hear this, you're like, these guys played at the same place as the Ramones, and yeah. it's like, wait, not at all like them. Um, I'm really not sure what this song's about. Maybe getting into trouble. Um, Friction. Yeah, the vocals and the lyrics are not why I recommended this song, mm-hmm. um, but the reason I recommend it is because the guitars. Uh, there are some really awesome guitar licks that they just throw in randomly during the verses and the chorus. Yeah, and it's not like annoying guitar licks. It's it's really tasteful and it just it it amplifies the sound of the song, uh, and it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, there is a guitar solo which is which is pretty blistering, uh, which I would say. Blistering. It uh, melts my face off. <laughs> oh, does it now? Yeah, it, much more of a rock and roll kind of song, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, th- like I said, the guitar is what sold me on the song. Hmm. Not the vocal melody, not the lyrics. Hmm. I mean, the, the melodies and the vocals are, are fine, the lyrics are fine. Yeah. That's just not what sold me on the song. The music okay. is. On to song number four, which is called Marky Moon. Uh, I gave it an honorable mention, and I gave it uh, a rating of the History Channel, because the History <laughs> Channel has some great, awesome things to watch. But sometimes they can be a bit long. And Why do I say that? Because this song is almost 11 minutes long. Yep. Um, however, I would say that 
and I think a lot of people would agree this is the album's centerpiece. Yeah, for um, sure. the, the album's only eight songs long, so this falls right around the middle. Four and five would be the middle tracks. Uh, but this song is super long, uh, and I might go as far as to say it's their most iconic and most popular song. I would song. say so, yeah. Just because of that, like the intro. And that opening guitar line. Down out, down out, down out. <laughs> which comes back a ton of times in the song and plays out throughout the, the verse. Yeah, I always like whenever the drums come in because it feels way off. It does. If you try and like imagine what the drums should be when you hear the music before the drums come in, when the drums actually do come in, it sounds weird, syncopated, and just a, a very strange beat. And uh, the reason for that is because that is on two and four instead of one and three mm-hmm. of the beats. Which uh, so, further goes to show their musicianship at writing and performing. Yeah, because like you know how like people clap to a song, they normally do that on one and three. Yeah, so this is different. So like that kind rhythmically, of, it throws you off. Yeah, rhythmically, it just feel it feels like it's late, yeah. but it's not. Um, but uh, like I said, most popular. That's probably why they set the title to the album as as the same as this, which is Marky yeah. Moon. Um, Lyrically, I think it's about hardships, uh, even in the first verse, which mm-hmm. they return to at the end of the song. He talks about darkness doubled. Yeah. Uh, he says lightning that Ooh, struck its... the darkness doubled! Yes, it did. <laughs> and he talks about the lightning that struck, As that strikes recall, itself. As lightning struck itself! Which is pretty vivid imagery. It's kind of yeah. interesting. I was listening. You do not listening. sound at all like him. Well, you kind of sound like him. You sound more like David Bowie. Oh, <laughs> that's what I think when you see it there. <laughs> Apparently, Mark, like the word Marky Moon, and I read this, I don't know if it's true or not, is a metaphor uh, for life passing over time in like how it can be slow and monotonous. Um, I don't know. That's just what I read. Um, and the song is really long and can be monotonous. Not in a bad way, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, the guitar line before the chorus, they go into this this uh, weird scale, and it almost sounds psychedelic Ooh, again. Do, 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 yes. Do, do, do. But then after that, it sounds more major. And when it comes back in after that that line, I almost think it's going to be a fast punk song, but that's just a drum fill. Uh, a fun little tidbit, uh, they practiced, I, I read somewhere they, they were super well practiced before going into the studio to record this. Really? They did this in one take. This one, and this the, song? Yes, the engineer thought they were just rehearsing, and they're like, no, that's it. Like, no, that, that's the take. <laughs> yeah, so that goes to show off their musicianship. It's That's crazy. There's like a four to five minute like instrumental jam in this song. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. And uh, it, again, that shows off their skilled musicianship. That's pretty crazy. Wow, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, uh, I've read that in multiple sources, so it's got to be true. Uh, First hand wow. sources. I think the engineer said that, so that's, that's pretty cool. Wow. Um, uh, honorable mention, check it out, but it, I, I didn't recommend it. I, I really went back and forth between going with this one or Friction, so mm. I chose Friction. Um, on to song number five, which is called Elevation. I gave it a rating of Cartoon Network. Oh. Can be good, can be stupid. It's good, it's good on Saturday morning if you want to watch cartoons. If you want to watch cartoons, that's right. Anyhow. On to the next um, one. It's a slower song, but I get bored with it. <laughs> the chorus is cool, mm. but I get bored. Uh, on to song number six, which is called Guiding Light. I gave this a rating of TBS on Christmas Day, which obviously they play the Christmas story 24 hours. <laughs> And any other time that you're watching The Christmas Story, it's great. You can watch it and have a great time. But when they're playing it back to back to back, you don't really watch it. It's a background thing. Yeah. Okay. That's why I said that. Okay. Um, uh, this so wait, song... your, your rating was TBS on Christmas Day? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a, another slow song like Elevation, the last song. Yeah. Uh, the guitars are lulling and kind of spacey. It sounds like you're floating. But musically, it really doesn't go anywhere for me. It's, it's, it's a good song, but I didn't recommend it. Okay. Um, on to song number... What was that? That was song number six. So we'll go on to song number seven, which is called Prove It, uh, which I did. It's my last recommendation. Prove It! I gave this a rating of Food Network. Oh. Usually, I can be entertained with anything on there, but they played Chopped so much on Food Network. And, and just, Chopped is one of the best shows ever. Um, so the song Prove It, not only is it a change of pace from the last two songs, which were slow, but I think... This might be a huge change of pace concerning the whole album. Mm-hmm. Uh, this song has this weird, I don't know if it's like an arpeggiated guitar line, but it's do 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 which <laughs> almost reminds me of like an old pop song. Yeah. Um, and that only really happens during the verse and pre-chorus. And when they get to the chorus, it, it almost sounds like a return to their former sound. Okay. Um, but the, the verses are just really cool sounding. And 
next to the the very first song, "See No Evil." I think this is the the second most fun song on the album. Mm, it's, okay. um, I don't know. Like I said, for most of the other songs, I'm not really sure what it's about. Um, I think it might be about him investigating life because he talks about like having a case that he's been working on for a long time and trying to yeah. prove something. Yeah. Um, but the verses, it's hard to kind of figure out what the hmm. the case is. Uh, maybe he's investigating life. Um, I don't know. It's it's just a really fun song. It's not depth yeah. wise. I don't have that much to add to it, but I yeah. just, I, I enjoyed listening to this one. Okay, cool. It stuck with me. Um, on to the last song, song number eight, which is called "Torn Curtain." I gave it a rating of C span. Because it's really boring. Um, I like to skip this one. <laughs> C-SPAN. Um, however, lyrically, uh, there's a lot of innuendo in this song. Really? Um, I didn't know until I researched it. Uh, and it, Depending on how you look at it, it can get pretty graphic. Huh. Uh, it's pretty sexual. Yeah. Um, gra- like, lyrically, it's it, the whole thing's pretty much an innuendo for uh, taking the virginity of a girl. Okay. Physically, it's it's the physical descriptor. Okay, um, I'll leave it at that. If you want to research it, go ahead. Um, could be considered pretty vulgar if you really read into it. Well, a lot of poetry is like that. Yes, uh, but it's 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 out there. Huh? Yeah, but it's you know it's it's whatever. So, um, what did you think overall? Overall, uh, it's a pretty good album. It's yeah. it's really different. And when I read that, because I listened to it a few times, and then I researched the band and found out that they were a CGBG band, Mm -hmm. that's what struck me the most. Because I heard the band, I was like, oh, a good rock and roll band. And then I was like, wait, they played in the punk scene with all these other bands? What? What is that? Interesting. So I'm trying to imagine, like, being at CGBGs on a a weekend or whatever and seeing, like, all these crazy bands and then seeing television come up and it just being oddly different and obviously the fans that were there liked it enough for them to keep playing regularly yeah because they had like a regular show every week yes every week that's pretty going from the ramones to this yeah that's pretty crazy that's cool don't Um, get me wrong and i think this is a really iconic album so everyone should listen to it just yeah i think i think so too um the place that it had in, in history yeah i can i mean i can pretty much pretty much guarantee that this is this album sounds like none other I, I i agree like nothing this is the only album that sounds like this that i've listened to um and, and, and during my research this uh, aside topic from the sound of it uh this made so many top lists like top 100 albums of all time it was like mm-hmm. the top 10 of the 70s albums uh just most iconic rock albums or all, all kind of things like that uh but a lot of people don't really refer to this that I've ever heard of and, and one person who was reviewing the album said this is an album for music lovers in the know oh, um, okay. so like maybe a band's band or, right. or something like that it's like a band that isn't well known but a lot of a well lot of people bands love it or a yeah. lot of well known music lovers so kind of like well there, there are a few other bands that I can think of like that yeah it's kind of interesting I, I think they, they've gone to influence bands of many different genres I wouldn't be surprised if Pennywise was influenced by them. They could have been, for all I know. Yeah. Or, I, I, if not directly, I'm sure they were indirectly influenced by a band that was influenced by television. Yeah. So, definitely, I'd say down the chain of influences, Pennywise and television would be connected. Yeah. Uh, but Pennywise, I'd say, is very different than Quite television. Quite different. Um, there um, are a lot of power chords. In not only this is there like a 30 album. year difference between the two bands, well, let's we'll say 20 to 30 year difference. Yeah, but uh, sound wise, but it's sound very wise, different. it is much different. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, the first thing I'll say about this album is that they are a lot like Bad Religion. I could see that, uh, in, but be more specific. Okay, yeah, yeah, not not in the same way, like not in the same like musically, not the same musically at all, really, because all of their songs are very simple. Pennywise's songs, yeah. Um, but the reason that I say they're like Bad Religion is because Bad Religion and Pennywise both seem like they're using the punk genre as a vehicle to get their message across. Okay, I can see that. And um, I was watching this YouTube clip recently uh, about a documentary, or mm-hmm. not about a documentary, but it was a documentary. Yeah. Um, and one of the guys from Pennywise was talking mm-hmm. about how once Bad Religion came out with the album Suffer... Yes. Um, that like heavily influenced how they do songwriting, like in terms of the content of their songs. Okay, so like yeah. it being mostly about um, like social um, issues and like the evolution of the human species, mm-hmm. pretty much. 
So a lot of a lot of the songs in here kind of deal with that type of thing. Um, I will say that all of the songs are very catchy. Yes, um, they're all they all sound very similar. Can I predict what you're about to say? Sure. Well, I was just about to predict that you were going to say they all sound similar. Okay. <laughs> um, which I'm just interjecting real quick because that's I love Pennywise. They are a staple in the punk rock industry. But the main complaint that people have about them is that they sound the same throughout album to album, song to song. Yeah. Which I but agree with, but I, I that can, can pass either it that I love can it. either be a blessing or a curse. Yeah, just because I'm sure people like really like Pennywise and are glad that they stay the same. Yeah. And I think you Pennywise know? is happy with what they put out. Yeah. So why is that a bad thing? Hmm. I agree. Um, but anyway, the album title from the ashes, I can definitely see why they called it that. Um, because none of the titles of the songs are, are, are from the ashes, but, um, throughout the whole album, there are a lot of themes of like rebirth, of mm-hmm. like becoming a new, of realizing that there's something that needs to be changed, changing it, and then realizing that it's better. So that whole idea of like the phoenix dies and then is reborn from the ashes. Yeah. Okay. You know, and so I think I, I kind of see why they named it from the ashes. Yeah. Um, and so the songs that I recommend all all kind of have that same similar tie. And there are a couple of honorable mentions that I also okay. recommend that are also in Fair that enough. same vein of thinking. Fair enough. So the track number one, or the first song, as I well, I was gonna say the first song, but then I <laughs> said, so the track number one. So the track number one. The track number one is called Now I Know. Now I know. Yeah, now I know. And now you the title know. of track number one. Classic. Uh this song I think is a really great opening song. Now I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But basically, this song is a lot of has a lot to do with what I was talking about earlier, rising from the ashes. It's a, it's a song basically about figuring out your path in life, essentially. Um, so the song title "Now I Know," like he talks a lot about now, like now I know that like that wasn't right for me, and like I'm just saying like general statements of what the song means. Yeah, not actual lyrics. Um, like now I know this past way that I was doing something is wrong. And now I know. So now I know. So now I'm going to move forward. Yeah. Um, learn. Yeah. So I'm going to learn from mm-hmm. my past and move forward. Uh, but I gave that song five out of five and a stizar. A stizar. A star or recommended. recommendation. Yeah. yeah. Track number two is called God Save the USA. I think this might have been the first Pennywise song I ever heard. Oh, really? Like, back when I was in middle school or something. Interesting. I was like, ooh, kinda cool. I like this. You're like, ooh, it's fast. It's still one of my favorite songs. I, I learned this one on the guitar, and I used to play along mm-hmm. with the, the album all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a very, uh, if you didn't guess it by the name of the song, it's a very political song. Very political. Uh, uh, angsty, punk rock political. Yep. Uh, like, talking about how we're living in, like, a... A terrible society where all they care about is money and factories and capitalism is bad and yeah, all we need are, all, all we need are more factories to pumping build up filth into, into the, the sun. sky. Yeah, pu- yeah, pumping filth in the sky. Yeah, yeah it's nothing new. And no like, new ground, I guess. Politically, it's definitely not new ground. Um, I gave this an honorable mention, four to five. Okay, because uh, it's really catchy and I, I really really like it. And in some ways, I, I like kind of agree with them on a cynical level, <laughs> um, but not that. Not that much of a cynical level, you know. Um, anyway, the next song, track number three, is called "Something to Change." Uh, this, this is also has a lot to do with with the main theme of "From the Ashes." Mm-hmm. Um, this is a song where you realize that you need something to change. If something yep. is wrong, and you need to change. That's what the chorus is all about: yep. needing something to change. Yeah, whatever that something maybe. And I gave that a 3.5 out of 5. So on to track number 4, which is an honorable mention, 4 out of 5. Uh, it's called Waiting, which leads right into, like, right in from, I realized I need something to change, and now I'm waiting. So he's, uh... He's it's waiting! Song- <laughs> <laughs> it's a song about waiting for what I believe they're saying is, to find the way to peace or um, solace or the last piece to the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> to shalom. So. Shalom. 
to figuring out, you know, like what the purpose of your life is and then, you know, living that way. So the last song kind of leads into this one. Um, and I think that, I mean, it's so hard to like give honorable mentions and recommendations because a lot they're of them all are, so similar. Yeah. I can so understand like, that. So like this one sounds essentially the same as the last song. Essentially. 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 Uh, but I, uh, I like that they're, they're pretty consistent with the sound on this album. They definitely are. It's, uh, I, I, we'll I see. guess we didn't really talk about them at, at line band-wise, who they are or whatever. Oh, true, yeah, do that so real quick. Let's see, we can do that mid midway through Jesse's review. They are, I'd say, I don't, I don't know, like I said, a staple in the punk rock industry. Uh, I'd say a skate punk band, similar to No Effects uh, in that genre. Um, maybe s- somewhat similar to Bad Religion Sound. Uh, they've got one guitarist, one bass player, one drummer, and one singer. The guitarist is isn't the isn't that the band where the guitarist is like seven feet tall? He's huge. Uh, yeah. His name's Fletcher Drag. I think that's his last name. I think it's spelled like D R A G G E. So I never know how to pronounce it. Drage. But he's he's a big guy. Uh, I think he plays an Ibanez guitar that's like one <laughs> and one quarter. Like, cause you know how they'll talk about three quarter size guitars. Yeah, his is one and one oh, quarter, it has so it's to be bigger. Th- it's bigger, <laughs> like the next longer to accommodate his size. Yes, which is really funny because That's you don't you, you hear yeah. about the the kids getting smaller guitars because it's easier to play. Um, for reference, for for you guys, if you're not sure about guitar sizes, if you're familiar with Ed Sheeran, he plays a small guitar, which I believe is a three quarter size. It's either three quarters or like a seven eighth size I think guitar. It's three quarters, yeah. And so it's it's a small guitar, and that looks normal on him. Yeah. Uh, so Fletcher, the guitar player from Pennywise, plays I believe it's a one and one quarter size guitar, and that looks small on him, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks regular. I, yeah. I mean, it fits him well. Um, Pennywise is a great band. I've only seen them live once, but I've been listening for for a long, long time. Um, uh, their singer, his name is Jim Lindbergh. I don't know if you've heard of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wrote a book called Punk Rock Dad, which I think I have on my shelf somewhere. Uh, but that's for another time. No, I do see it. It's right next to No Effects. Punk Rock Dad. That's kind of cool. Um, and it inspired the movie called The Other F Word. Have mm-hmm. you heard of that? Yeah, you told me. And they're not talking about the expletive. They're talking about fatherhood. And yeah. that movie uh, kind of explores dads in punk rock music. Like yeah. Mark Hoppus from Blink-182 is in there. Even Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers makes makes a, a brief appearance. Huh. Um, but that movie outlines Jim Lindbergh, and in the end of the movie, he quits Pennywise to focus on his oh, family. Wow. And they replaced him with a guy named Zoli. I think his last name is Teglas. Huh. From the band Ignite, they made a great album, and now Jim Limber is back in Pennywise. Really? Yeah. So, oh wow, there you go. Fun little history. Cool. Um, anyway, I believe I was on track number five, called Salvation, and I gave it a three out of five. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Track number six is called Look Who You Are. I gave it a five out of five and recommend it. Oh, interesting. Such a great chorus. I might not have... Rec- I wouldn't recommend recommended this one, but I'm surprised. And this is the song where I can really see the connection to the album title. And if you couldn't tell, a lot of my rec- recommendations are based on their connection to the album title. Okay, that makes sense. So That actually makes a lot of sense when you put it in that context. This, uh, this song, uh, Look Who You Are is a song about honest self-reflection. So taking like an honest look at the quote-unquote man in the mirror. You know that phrase? The man in the mirror. No, not that. But, I mean, te- I'm te- technically looking that. at the man in the mirror. <laughs> 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 oh, Jamona. Jamona. <laughs> oh, man. This is not um, a Michael, uh, Michael Jackson review. Sorry. No, it's not. Sorry. Uh, it's Not also sorry. just a very catchy chorus, too. Yeah. Look who you are, just a member of society, a something called to tragedy. They don't, they don't really write intricate melodies by any no. stretch of the imagination, and a lot of the verses don't really have much of a melody at all. Uh, so that, that kind of makes me think that they write the words first, and yeah. then write and the then melody. try to get them to fit somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this song is... Again, about taking an honest look at yourself in the mirror, um, facing the, you know, like the uh, inadequacies that you see in yourself, accepting them and trying to work on them. So that's basically what this song is about. And and that's why I recommended it, because it has a lot of connection to the the title title. of the album. I like how you you, uh, kind of chose some recommendations based on the title. That's pretty cool. Makes sense. I like that. 
Um, track number seven is called Falling Down, four to five, and it's very catchy. Your pictures are falling down. Not is that bl- the song? <laughs> nope. <laughs> not, it's not Blink. They're falling down. Falling down. Oh, man. That song is way better than Falling Down by Pennywise. Sorry, Pennywise. Oh, my God. Sorry, not sorry. You'd probably say that you might, I have a, any Blink song is better than I have a Blink-182 book written by band. Mark Hoppus' sister. Mm-hmm. And uh, they've got a lot of first-hand accounts. Um, and of Blink-182, one of them? their first big... Yeah. One of their first big tours, I believe... I don't know if it was to Canada or to Australia, but was with Pennywise. Oh, really? So they've got some fun anecdotes about that. That's kind of cool. They talk about how crazy Fletcher is. The, the big guitar the, player. The big guitar player. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. And uh, Fletcher tried to go to, uh, what's his, what's the guy's, the guy who puts on Warp Tour every year, he tried to get them to put Blink-182 on the tour, and the guy's like, nah. Really? Yeah. And then eventually, I think the following year, he put Blink on the tour, but not when not when uh, Fletcher told him to. Huh. I can't remember his name. I should, Kevin Lyman, or Lehman, however you pronounce it, that's the guy who does Warp Tour. Probably Lehman. Yeah. Or maybe Lemon. Lemon. Liz Lemon. Kev. What? From uh, 30 Rock. Oh. <laughs> or Jack Lemon, the great actor. Is that the guy in 30 Rock? No, Jack Lemmon, I think, is... That's just the... I think he's in that movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Never heard of it. Uh, Alec Baldwin gives that uh, that crazy monologue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The leads the, are weak. The, FN leads are weak. You're weak. What is it? Coffee is for yeah, clothes. Coffee. Put that coffee down. Coffee is, is for, for closers. closers. A, B, C... Always, Always be, be closing. closing. What a great speech. What a, a great speech. speech. That's the only part he's in the movie, just for that, that uh, monologue. He comes in and to then help them. That speech makes you think, like, man, what's the like, what's the what would the point of that job be? If you you got to really want, if, you want, if that's really your highest stuff, value in life, then that's good. If you really want to sell stuff and make money, I guess. If you really don't want to, then obviously that's not the job for you. Yep. Anyway, moving on. Enough about life. Let's talk about an album about life. <laughs> okay. Am I right? Anyway, uh, track number eight. I almost gave this an HM, an honorable mention. Uh, it's, it's called good. Holiday in the Sun. It has a good good chorus. Really great chorus. Isn't this fun? It's a holiday in the sun. Yeah, really great um, harmonies and melodies in that in that chorus. Mm-hmm. And that's that's probably that's the reason I really like that song. Which is one of the small things. They're in, not melodic and they're not harmonic. There's yeah, not harmonies going too it's, often. Yeah, yeah. So that that's one of the small things in this Pennywise album where you're like, ooh, that's different. When you hear harmony or a yeah. really cool melody, that's you're like, that's oh wow, different. that's more than yeah. three notes apart from each other from the for the melody, <laughs> which stands out in the next song, I think. Yes, it does. Uh, the next song is a recommendation. Track number nine, five out of five. Gave it a big star. Not the band Big Star, but... <laughs> it's a good band. Um, this song is called This Is Only a Test. This is only a test of the, the emergency, emergency broadcast, broadcast system. system. Da, 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 da. Our own reckless ambition. Mm-hmm. The castles we have that have all become our prison. Sorry. It's all right. Um, so the biggest change... Like- that's the biggest change you hear an acoustic guitar in this song. On a Pennywise album, you hear acoustic yeah. Guitar. What the hey? What the hey? What the hey yo? Hey yo! It's your birthday. Hey! Oh! <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Inside joke between us. Yeah. Well, we can tell you. We we played this That's game. We'll play it. Okay, we can tell. It's a great joke. We played this game called. Uh, it's not really a joke. It's just a story. Yeah. We played we, this uh, game that Becca brought over called. What's it called? It's called iTunes. Uh, but I we. I y e iTunes. I we. That's how you spell. That's how you spell. I know. I y e iTunes, and it's it's a game where the main goal is to get there, your there teammate teams, to guess the there, song title. Yeah, there are teams that compete against each other, and one of the challenges is hum it. So you have to hum a song. Uh, four, there are four different songs on the card. You have to, ha- yeah, try, you have to, to try to get your team to get four points. All of them. So you have to hum one, and uh, Steve was trying to hum the song Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey Ho? Is it, or hey, is it, hey Ho by the Lumineers. By the Lumineers. And he was like, huh, huh. And they didn't get it, so I was like, da 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 Da, 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 hey! Hey! 
<laughs> and so immediately, everyone was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and so immediately, I like I said, it looks like you're pooping your pants. <laughs> are you constipated? And I was like, "No." <laughs> immediately, I thought that he was doing that song. Huh. War. What is it good for? <laughs> yeah, I, most of the, for most of the game, I was pretty good, but for that song, I just couldn't do it. I was too. Oh my I was gosh. too loud and crazy. It was so funny. That game, oh man, that game's a, that game's fun. They're not a sponsor, but check it out if you yeah, want. Yeah, it's called iTunes. If you like music and and like you know, kind of like a game like charades where you have to get not well charades, kind of like charades, and like catch you, phrase. you gotta hum. There's one where you gotta draw, and then there's one where it's like a puzzle, like a picture, like a puzzle. picture puzzle. Yeah. It's kind of a fun game. Shout out to iTunes. It's a great game. Yeah. Uh, back to back to this the song. Is only a test this is only song. a test. Uh, so yeah, acoustic guitar, and basically what I'm going to say about the meaning of this song is that it's an ironic. It's ironic. Yeah. That they're saying that this is only a test because this is another um, song talking about the state of society and like being very political. Mm-hmm. So they're like, "This is is a this." <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> This is only a test of the emergency broadcast system. Um, <laughs> this is a product of our own reckless ambition. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the lines in it, they say, is that they're, we're all waiting for someone to save us from ourselves. Yeah. Um, so it's, again, kind of this idea of we need to realize where we are and then figure out how to fix it, and then rise up from the ashes of the past Yeah, to move forward. Nice connection there. I'm just saying. Um, That's why they named it From the Ashes. Side note, current events, uh, corner, I guess, whatever you want to call this. Sure. You know what wasn't a test? What happened in Hawaii? I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but it's crazy. Um, I don't know if you know about... uh, I'm sure you do. We all have smartphones. Like, if there's an Amber Alert or, like, a... A weather emergency. Sometimes we'll get notifications on our phones telling us. Yep. Apparently in Hawaii, all these people were getting a notification that there was a nuclear ballistic. I think it said nuclear ballistic missile. Missile uh, was or inbound for Hawaii. Missile. It says, "Take shelter. This is not a drill. This is not a test of yeah. the emergency broadcast system." Uh, ironically, it was a some someone working for some defense something or other in Hawaii accidentally pressed a button. And so it was a mistake that went unchecked for about 13 minutes. Yeah. But can you imagine that? Like getting a, a notification on your phone saying, Oh my a God. A bomb is and coming in. For take 13, cover. For this 13 is not a drill. minutes. For 13 I, minutes, you think you're like about to die, maybe. I'd be like, Oh no, we're going to die. Let's go get some Taco Bell quick <laughs> before it's all over. <laughs> and then they're like, That was only a test. And then you're like, Crap. Well, <laughs> I just said Taco got, Bell. At least I got Taco Bell. So um, there's going to be a bomb somewhere else, like the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Bell bomb. <laughs> a TBB. Taco Bell bomb. Taco Bell bomb. <laughs> yeah. And it's unpredictable when that bomb's going to hit. But um, it will happen after Taco Bell, that's for sure. Have you seen... There, I saw a meme today of uh, Baby Groot almost pushing that button in the movie. And yes. they were like, people in Hawaii right now. Or like the person in Hawaii who accidentally pushed that button. And it's Baby Groot being like, should I push this button? <laughs> uh, that's from... Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. I don't know that part. I still have, I still have to watch it. Oh. <laughs> anyway. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> it's, it's the best line. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, moving on, I guess. Anyway, yeah, moving on. Um, I'm going to go through these last ones pretty quick, except mm-hmm. for one of them. Uh, drag number 10 is called Punch Drunk. That was usually a skipper for me. 3.5 out of 5. Sounds like a skipper for you, too. So, um... Track number 11 is, we gotta rise up. I like this song. I especially we like gotta the, rise uh, up. the drum intro. Mm-hmm. Um, I gave this song four to five. And again, rise on, up on the, from yeah, the ashes? Exactly. On the same theme of from the ashes, yeah. is the song is, is about picking your, it's the old phrase of pick yourself up by the bootstraps. Yeah. You know. Classic. Uh, on to track number 12. It's called Yesterday's. This is an honorable mention for me. I liked it See, a lot. This one, I don't dislike the song. I just it's, it, it's not a favorite for me. But listen to why it's an honorable mention. Okay, tell me why. Because it is a song that again. Tell me why. Oh my gosh. It is a song that again connects to that theme of from the ashes, that theme of not living in ignorance about a problem, because this song 
is all about like reminiscing about days past, about like reminiscing about days that were simpler, that made more sense, that weren't challenging or a something like that. A simpler time. Yeah. Oh, it was back in a simpler time. Ah, oh, back when we were picking potatoes in Ireland, it was a much simpler time. Oh, gosh. Before we were on the streets when there was war. Ah, back when there was no industrial revolution. Back before it Daniel was Lewis simpler. was killing us from the gangs. <laughs> of he New was, York. Yeah, he was building the butchering us all over Who the place. Are we? The wild rabbits. Two rabbits. Is that I, what it's called? I remember when we came from the, the old land. All we did was pick potatoes. Ah, and then there was our... Our now, priest, now, Liam Neeson. Yeah, the priest, Liam Neeson. Well, then he died in battle. Yeah, from when he was in the old land, you know what he did? Where's his son? He used to pick potatoes, but now he went into battle and he is no more. Ah, he, but luckily his son's here. Yes, Liam DiCaprio Neeson. Oh, wait. But then <laughs> he gets into a fight with Daniel Day-Lewis. Oh, no. He's like, I'm going to build a butcher you. But then, there's an, <laughs> but then there's another battle. My eyeball is American. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy! <laughs> we can't give the whole premise of this movie right now. But then there's another battle. The movie's like two and a half spoiler, hours long. Spoiler alert. But then there's another battle going on <laughs> when, <laughs> when going Daniel on? Day Lewis and, De- and Leonardo DiCaprio are both fighting each other. There's a whole other battle going All on. Alright, Amsterdam. Yeah, you be him. Whoopsie daisy, Amsterdam! I'm well, gonna build a butcher you! Leonardo DiCaprio doesn't really have a thick accent in that movie. No, I'm doing Bill the Butcher. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, what should I do for Leo? I don't... Because he's like, he's like, this, this war ends today. That's a New York accent, never mind. Oh. This war, I'll see what... <laughs> just, let's this just, war ends let's, today! Let's nip this, this bit in the bud. But then, the best scene of all. The very last scene. The very last yeah. scene, when... Um, they show the skyline of New York being built over time, and over in the, you realize the, that everything in the the previous everything two is hours not. that you watched are pointless. Yeah. Well, so like, there's a point to it. It's and just you're like history time might forget it. Hit, we people of the, of the the present forget history. Yeah. Too easily. Uh, that was a huge grass. <laughs> that was. Um, I think that, it was worth having. I don't know if we, we because you got to rise up. The movie is called. Gangs of New York. Yeah. I believe it's Martin Scorsese. Yep. Uh, it's a great film. Check Daniel it out. Day Lewis. It was on Netflix. I'm not sure if it still is. Uh, it might if, not be. if it's not on Netflix, pick it up on DVD. You can probably find it for five bucks somewhere. It's great. It's a really good movie. That's great. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, yesterday's. Um, that's a great song. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this up, all right? All right, finish it up. The track number 13 is called Change My Mind. You and know what I changed my mind about? Picking potatoes. <laughs> now I'm going to war. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to... Back to change oh, my mind. Oh, you know what? I think I changed my mind. Whoopsie, Whoopsie daisy. daisy. No, I didn't. All right, Amsterdam. <laughs> this is a kill. <laughs> you take this knife and you just make this nice clean cut on this piece of meat. It's like, what's he say? This is an injury. This is a kill. Yeah. Whoopsie daisy. He says like... This is how you kill a man, okay? He does it on a... a, a on a pig. pig on a yeah, pig carcass. That's hanging in a butcher like, shop. This is a kill. This isn't a kill. This is just an injury. And this is a pig. And then he's like, Now take this meat back to your family. This is a <laughs> present for you. That is... Uh, going back to the movie. <laughs> we did actually... Um, in my um, civics class in 8th grade, we watched a portion of this movie. Uh, yeah. uh, Tammany Hall voting... Um, because that actually happened in, in uh, real life. Uh, while this movie is based on historical facts, mm-hmm. um, like the the corruption of the government, where they would get people to vote two or three times to vote for him, he would yeah he would get these guys to vote. Then he would take them to the barber shop to get their beards cut and a haircut like, and send them right back no, into the polls. And then he would have like a bath, like give them a bath and whatnot. Yeah, and, yeah, crazy. But uh, we, we need to stop talking about this movie. Anyway, it's a great movie. It is. But anyway, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Go to the last two tracks. No more aggresses. You got it, dude. As I was saying before, track number 13 is called Change My Mind. Mm -hmm. And I give it four to five, and it is basically saying that you are resolved in your point of view. So now that we're at the end of the album, you see what I'm saying here? Yeah. Now that we're at the end of the album, they've picked themselves up by the bootstraps. They've rised up. Rose up. Sorry. Rose up, yeah. They rised up. They rised up. (laughs) And uh, now they're saying, we're not changing our mind. We're going to keep our resolve to move forward from the ashes. Word. And the last song is called Judgment Day. 
Three out of five, but there are some nice yas. Uh, I don't like the yas in this song. <laughs> don't you like the uh, fact that it's like a Picardy third? Well, that's or fine. a but kind the, of Picardy third? The yas in general I don't really care for, but that's, that's fine. That's all right. That's fine. <sighs> that's all right. You know who didn't escape Judgment Day? Whoopsie daisy, Bill the Butcher. <laughs> Bill the Butcher didn't, but Amsterdam did. Kind of. Kind of. I don't know. Who knows? None of them did because yeah. it ends in present day. <laughs> But anyway, enough about that movie. Two pretty good albums, in my opinion. Let's uh, for very different reasons. Do we? You get your recommendation for next episode? Yes, I do. Do you? I most certainly do. Alrighty, let's get to it then. All right, what am I listening to? You are going to be listening to an album by Band of Horses. Did you say that slow so you could look up what the name of the album was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say that as if I don't know what you're doing because I'm watching you look up the album <laughs> as you say it very slow. <laughs> I was going to say, for those of you who are listening in slow motion, that would have been very slow. But, yeah, I'm not going to do that Can in you slow listen motion. to things in slow motion? I don't know. You probably, if you took the like, audio Like, not a yourself. video, but like not like I'm making a slow motion video on I'm your sure phone. I'm sure you could. Who knows? But anyway, you are going to be listening to the album Cease to Begin by the band... Band of Horses. All right, and you're going to be listening to an album by the band Rise Against. For those of you listening in slow motion, that was Rise Against. Yes. Oh, wait, uh, listening. Yeah, listening in slow motion, <laughs> yeah. Like uh, the album's called The Sufferer and the Witness. Okay. Uh, that's probably their... Uh, there are other albums I like better, Rise but this against. is their, their biggest... I'd say their mainstream uh, Hit. breakthrough okay. album. Okay. I've definitely heard of Rise Against. I have not listened to them that much, though. If you heard their biggest actually, radio song, it's on this one, probably. I, prob- I probably You have. probably know at least one, maybe two songs on this album. We'll talk about that afterwards to see yes, if I will. know what it is. All right, but that's, we'll listen to those albums, and then in two weeks we'll review them. Why don't we uh, give a last view on our beers here? Yeah, Jesse and I both have exactly one sip left in our, our cups. Yep. Um, we have the exact same amount of beer in both of our cups. The, if you were to measure the amount of beer in like one of those... Measuring uh, cups? Uh, beakers. Beakers. Or a measuring cup. The measurement would be indistinguishable. It would be exactly the same. Yeah. Well, like, not even a, a milli ounce off. Has your has your taste changed about your, your beverage at all? Um, As it got warmer, it mellowed out more. Okay, interesting. Surprisingly. I mean, mine stayed roughly the same. Uh, it didn't okay. get any more pungent hop, like hop-wise. Uh, it stayed crisp. Uh, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly throughout. Uh, same here. Next time I would, I would PA, I would get this again. Yeah, I would for sure get this again as well. Yeah. All right, well, we'll, we'll say we give the uh, the old yo-yo, yo-yo. All right, let's do it. Yo-yo. <laughs> yo-yo. shib a bing Ah, so tasty. <laughs> Whoopsie-daisy, I finished daisy. my beer. Whoopsie-daisy, you did. Whoopsie daisy, it's the end of the episode. It is. Um, next week we'll be posting a one off uh, for whatever that. I can't remember which one it is, but. It'll be a surprise. It'll be a surprise. It's going to be a one off, and then the episode after that will be our Rise Against Band of Forces episode. Uh, thank, thank you, you guys so much for listening. Make sure to check us out on all the social meds. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Just look up American Brews and Tunes. If you do, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening again. Until next time. My name is Stephen Johnston. And my name is Jesse Titus. And this is American Brews and Tunes. Oh. Oh! Here's a theme song. You know it's not a mean song. It's a good song. Just as it should song. American Brews. Shibbity-beeby-day!